<laughs> okay, okay, admittedly, admittedly, not my wedding, not my wedding ring. I'm not mature enough to get married. This is my beautiful friend Jess. She is a fantastic pilot and friend, and she is at Crap Where Am I Now on Instagram, and if you're not following her, you are seriously missing out. Um, but anyway, children, like, children, um, when you make an Instagram or YouTube name, consider what is gonna happen, what's gonna happen later <laughs> when people call you crap. My husband yelled crap down the street the first time I met him. Her fiance, now husband, actually, proposed to her with the spark plug gasket out of one of these wagons, so uh, for, their wedding just asked if I could turn that into like an actual wedding cake. with like two weeks notice. With two. I'm not the best friend to have. <laughs> this little gasket has a hell of a story. My fiance had a buddy come out and photograph the airplanes, and he's like, "Oh, let me take some photos of you two. Just when we're just when we're back dating." My fiance's dad said, "This looks like an engagement shoot, mother." <laughs> he needed a ring, and so my fiance went and grabbed a spark plug gasket and threw it on my finger for this little photo shoot. And then fast forward, eight months later, I kept this little gasket and he's like, you still have that gasket in your purse. And uh, he got down one on me and asked me to marry him. So now we're, uh, we're trying to turn this little gasket into a wedding band for him. With how many uh, how many days of notice, Jess? You wanna, uh, you wanna come clean here or are, <laughs> we, are we gonna hide the truth? Oh no, 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 I'm putting a lot on style in less than two weeks. <laughs> it's all yours, girl. <laughs> the first thing I did was hit my veneer collection and try to find something that would work for this ring. And I found this quarter sawn maple from back when I did transparent wood. It didn't work at all in that project, but it has these beautiful flecks from like the medullary rays of the wood. And the bride really liked it. So I ended up just cutting some strips, uh, scarfing the edges of them so I could get a really clean joint. And then boiling them in water to soften them so I could bend them into nice brown rings. It's like making pasta, just a little more stressful. <laughs> Once I'd let them boil for about 10 to 15 minutes and they were tasting pretty al dente, not that I tasted them or anything, uh, I decided to take one out and start trying to bend it around a mandrel. You'll notice I made a lot of samples because I am foreseeing a lot of issues with this bending process. Now the maple veneers were a lot thicker than I think I really wanted for this process. They were 1 16th inch veneers. And I will say you might've seen the cherry strips that were also in here. Um, those were a lot easier because they were a lot thinner. But the bride wanted the really light wood of the maple because it would pop against his skin better. And who am I to argue with her? So I fought like four or five of these strips in maple and then headed over to a jeweler shop. Welcome to the workshop of Joe McFall of McFall Arts. You should check him out on Instagram. He is a self-proclaimed random internet jeweler. That's it. That's title. it. Joe also happens to be the lapidary, lapidary, lapidary that helped me cut out Utah in the 50 states map. So this is not actually the first time you've seen Joe. It's just the first time you've seen Joe's face. That's true. But anyway, it is T minus five days to the wedding. I haven't started yet, so that's when we need to bring in the experts to like make this happen. So let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is cut the silver out for the liners, and this is sterling silver? This is sterling silver. And the reason that we're not lining it with copper to match the inlay is because copper will do what? It's going to turn your finger green. <laughs> So I just uh, jumped into the seat and Joe looks at me and goes, don't worry, we have dozens of blades. <laughs> <laughs> and with that lovely vote of confidence in my ability to not break a blade, I got to work cutting the silver. And silver, by the way, is 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper for hardness, which makes it this really great alloy for ring liners and jewelry. Oh, there we go. No broken no blades. Broken <laughs> yes. The next step here is to anneal the metal. This functionally softens it so it can be bent, hammered, mutilated, etc. But what's really happening is you're heating up the molecules enough so that they're like fluid uh, enough to reset to its baseline crystal structure, which has the capacity to absorb pressure. But when it's cool and you begin hammering at it, you're work hardening it. And work hardening at an atomic level is that you're pushing around atoms and pinning them in place. So it's harder and harder for them to move around like past one another. And that makes the material stronger, but it also makes it less ductile and stretchy, which is kind of what we want to be doing. Also, I want to point out that I learned that in my art minor and not my mechanical engineering classes, so don't defund the arts. Put around the mandrel at seven and a half, and it will, if it's annealed, it will bend just like so. We're a little over, but that's okay for now. 
Then using a rounded pair of pliers, I bent it into more of a circular shape and then put it back on the mandrel, hammered it into a more of a circular shape and right over the size that I wanted. And that'll show me exactly how much I need to cut off to get the piece of silver to be exactly the same. Ah. Then using a straight file, I filed down the edges so they would be perfectly parallel, leaving no gaps when I go to solder it into a perfect circle. But when silver alloys are annealed in open air, copper oxides form. That's that blackish stuff and we can't solder over it. So using a rotary tool, I just polished off all of that oxide layer and that will give us a nice clean silvery surface for soldering. Then it was time to bend the ring such that there is no gap between those edges of its own accord because we can't be like holding it together while we're soldering it. So it takes a little bit of finessing and that side that has the solder joint will be flatter for now. And that's okay because we can round it out later. Now this is flux. It's basically borax mixed with water and it's just an acid that prevents oxidization as you heat the piece. So this will let the solder flow easily between the joints and create a strong chemical bond without oxidization ruining your day. To use it, we're just gonna gently paint some flux over the joint and all that nicely polished silver area. Uh, and again, that will just keep it clean as we heat up the piece. And then we just cut our little pieces of solder, place them over the joint, and we're ready to get soldering. Once you've prepped though, the soldering itself is really easy. You just gently heat up the piece and wait for that beautiful moment when the solder just goes and then check to make sure it went all the way through which this did so it's a good joint and we're good to quench and post quench be sure to bathe it in some dairy free sorbet sorry i meant pickle uh, and that's will help reduce the oxidization and with a successful solder joint it is time to whack it into shape the shape being round that's pretty round yeah i think so I then filed and sanded and filed and sanded and filed and sanded the joint smooth until it was completely invisible and by the way, I did decide to make two rings because even though Jess asked me for a men's wedding ring, I thought it would be a really cute wedding gift surprise if I made her a ring that matched her husband. So um, this is a ring sizer and you can make the ring smaller on this side, but we're not gonna be doing that. On the top, when you pull this lever, these expand, like these four pieces. I'm gonna zoom in. When this lever goes up, these all expand and that stretches out the metal, which has been annealed and then it'll fall down a little lower. It's sliding over the nine, but it's not. Yeah, you want the nine to be right, right in the middle. Right in the middle of it, okay. Is that on, spot on? I think it's on. All right, yo, perfect. All right. Boop. No, not that. No more of that. No more of that. <laughs> Before we continue with polishing and fit, we need to take it down to its final width. So here, Joe is striking the metal at about a quarter of an inch. And then the saw blade will follow the little nick I made if I am very good. So you are very good. We'll see. And at this point, it was time to sand, polish, and shape the inside of the ring, which uh, is just a bunch of insanely boring footage that looks like this, so you guys don't have to live through it. You're welcome. And the last thing I needed to do to the ring liner was seriously rough it up with a very rough file, and that will help me glue the wood to it. At this point, the wood had been drying for about 24 hours, and I would have loved for it to have dried for longer, but unfortunately, I was on a huge time crunch, which seems to be like the theme of my entire life. Uh, but anyway, I marked a little bit oversized on the wood and then cut it down to the right width to match the liner. I cut the wood down to the end of the scarf joint, gave the ring liner a little bit more filing, and then lined the inside with masking tape so that I don't get any glue on it, and it was time to glue. This part was really, really nerve wracking because with CA glue, you kind of only get one shot. Starting at the end, I thinned for that scarf joint. I just applied really even pressure all the way around with a lot of patience. <laughs> That's about it. It's, it's super nerve wracking and CA glue kicks immediately. So if you glue it in the wrong spot, you're kind of screwed. Uh, I did have to go in and add a little bit more CA glue where the wood on wood section was. And then I used a machining vise to really clamp it down in some of the areas where I didn't feel the wood was properly bonded. That worked pretty well. 
I knocked off the most offensive of the bumps with a rotary tool and then I popped it onto like a nice squishy rubber mandrel and stuck that in a drill press because I don't have a lathe, so this is the next best thing. Anyone who says they don't do that is lying. <laughs> and then it was just time to sand and sand and sand and sand and sand. And unfortunately, this isn't as accurate as a lathe. It does have a little bit of wiggle, but I was able to get a pretty good ring shape. A lot of what I'm doing right now is trying to hone in on the moment when that dark spot from the glue disappears, and this is it. With that one done, I took it out, popped the other ring in, and rinsed and repeated, except this time, well, wasn't wasn't quite as good. And it looks like that it, that will happen. It's gigantic. There's got to be a point where it starts getting smaller, right? I go too far. I feel like I just missed a sweet spot. It's getting dangerously thin. I got a little too far. Too far. I then sanded the wood down to the silver liner and it was time to start working on the inlay. Okay, so this is the literal spark plug gasket that Brian proposed with, so uh, we this is the part we really can't screw up. <laughs> and I uh, say that and immediately I'm gonna cut it. Before we can open it up into a wire though, we will need to anneal it. And we know it's annealed when it's glowing that beautiful coppery red. And it's amazing just how soft it gets once it's annealed. Like, look at this. This is basically no effort at all. Um, so I bent it out into as straight of a line as I could get it and then hammered it into place. And then once it started getting hard to hammer and hard to shape, we just re-anneal it. And now with my newly straight and newly annealed piece of copper, it was time to head over to the rolling mill to start drawing it out into a longer wire. This is a pretty simple machine. It just applies an even amount of pressure on each side as you hand crank it, and it's got descending sized divots, and you just work your way down until you reach your final size, which for me was this size. And I think this is a really cool clip because you can actually see the wire relax as it gets annealed. So that's that sort of like softening and recrystallization. To prep the wood in the rings for the inlay, I went back to using those spring calipers from before, measured out the halfway distance of the ring, and carefully carved or marked a divot in the wood. And since I don't have a lathe, I actually went in with a jeweler saw to carve out that divot, and then I progressively worked my way up files. And that was kind of the best way I could think of to keep a really even channel going all the way across. And once I'd gotten it to the perfect size for that wire, it was time to start prepping the inlay. So I started by just filing the end to be like a perfect 90 degree so that on the other side, I can do the same thing and get a nice clean joint, hopefully invisible, but I probably can't get that. Ooh. Filing the other end square was a little trickier too because I did cut it a tiny bit long with the intention of like sneaking up on that perfect invisible fit. Before doing the gluing itself though, I masking taped off the rubber mandrel so that I didn't ruin it. And then I chucked it up in a drill just to hold it off the table and also in case I wanted rotational power in the future, which I quickly decided I did. Um, the other thing I did is I covered the whole thing in CA glue, including the wood, because I wasn't sure how much of a stain it would leave. And if it did leave a stain, I wanted it at least to be an even stain. So I just slathered it in glue and then popped that inlay in. I used a bunch of tools to help like really push it in there, mostly just hard things I found around the workbench. Um, and yes, I glued parts of my glove on, but that's okay, it'll sand out. I did take a good amount of the copper off using a pretty aggressive file like you see me doing here, but as soon as I started getting close to the wood, I backed off because I really didn't want to hurt the wood. So I chucked it back up in the drill and went at it again with sandpaper. It 
And just like that, we're ready for finish. And I actually made a very bold choice here and I used clear five minute epoxy with the logic that I needed something really strong that would like definitely hold that copper inlay in. And also I needed something that would dry shiny smooth and really quickly. So this is what a time crunch will get you. Um, so I just painted it on like a varnish and then I chucked it up in a drill and let it spin until it was cured. And then, completed rings in hand, it was time to head to the most exciting wedding of my life. Here we go. Should I get done on one knee? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, what, what can't you do? <laughs> this is amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be weightless Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by yeah. I give you this ring <laughs> in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, aka all of my favorite things. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by the real experts, the kids, to teach a new theme in a hands-on way. They offer eight different subscription lines, each catering to different needs, and everything you possibly need for the project is included in the box, which means that you can do it in no trips to the store, which is better than I think any project I've ever done has been. <laughs> Plus, they come with kid-friendly instructions and a really cool educational magazine. KiwiCo believes that by learning the skills to innovate, problem solve, and create, kids can truly change the world tomorrow. KiwiCo lets kids remind us grown-ups the real power of small, because once they learn to solve problems today, who knows what they might get up to tomorrow. To take advantage of my super awesome offer from KiwiCo, head to kiwico.com slash xylofoxlin to get 50% off your first month of any crate. Sort of a side note, but being a pilot myself is something I haven't talked about at all on this channel, even though aviation is a really big part of my life. It's how I meet friends like Jess and Brian. So this was a bit of an experiment, dipping my toes into airplane content for the first time. So if you liked it, do please let me know, because I would love to share it with you. <laughs> Beacon. Beacon.